Good evening everyone. Hello. I trust that you are well on this amazing, amazing evening. Welcome to On His Commission. Now it is yet another episode right here on God's Heart Our Mission. Um, I am um, Taban Sakaichu. I am, yeah, <laughs> I'm here again in your company. Thank you so much for allocating time aside to be in the presence of the Lord and to fellowship with us here at God's Heart our Mission on His Commission Now. Um, if we just type in on the comment section to let me know who you are and when you are listening from. Of course, I'll see who you are, but rather where you are listening from. And then I'll be able to say hello because that's the weird thing about Facebook. From my end, I can't see unless you type something on the comment box. So welcome tonight on um, this amazing... Uh, time we're going to be spending together in the presence of the Lord. I trust that you are having a splendid week so far. Uh, today's extra special, right? I don't know if you guys know, right? Okay, of course you know. <laughs> but hey, today's a special day. It's the 22nd of the second month of February. How cool is that? It's the 22nd of the second month of February. And there's a lot going on. I don't know if you guys are active on social media, but I mean, there's a lot going on from what I have actually discovered today. I made it my business to know about this. Um, for most of you who are not aware, we do have um, weekly um, blogs coming out every single Monday on um, God's Heart, the Zere. That is our Christian blog. So you're welcome to go there and read up on that, which we share. We are basically just sharing the word of God. That's all we do here. Nothing too fantastic. Um, we're not, you know, we're learning, we're journeying with God and we're growing in the things of the spirit. And um, we are going to do this together. So welcome on this platform. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I cannot see who is there. Come on, say hello. I'm I'm coming to you live from Cape Town. So please let me know where you're coming live from so that um, we can just, um, I can say hello and, you know, shout out or something to that effect. Um, I'm also a radio presenter. I don't know if many of you are aware, but I have a show called The Burning Bush with Lady Tabang on Africa USA Radio. It is a gospel uh, channel, so you can catch me Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays between 5 to 7 Central African time in the evening. Um, there I'll be bringing you the word, I'll be bringing you the latest content in Christianity and so on and so forth. It's going to be amazing. And if you are keen on being a guest on the show, be sure to inbox uh, me at um at, at the inbox use the god's heart inbox it's fine i'll be able to get that that would be awesome so before i go anywhere let me just start by praying and just welcoming the holy spirit for such a time as this so that he's able to minister into our hearts and carry forth the word of god so let us pray Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. This is the day you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person on the other side of the screen. May you richly bless them, Lord God. May you just um, surround them with your presence and um, stretch forth your hand of favor over them and their family members. I thank you, Lord God, for such a time as this. May I only speak that which is from your Holy Spirit and not out of my own words, Lord. I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for this pleasant moment. And I ask that you uh, be the light in directing my thoughts, my um my words and everything that I'm about to share with your children. May they be ministered to, blessed abundantly. And I pray all of this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And the good people of the Lord said amen. All right. So, um, as I was saying, today is the 22nd of the second month of 2022. Huh? 22nd of the second month of 2022. I love it. Apparently, um, it, this is a once in a lifetime day. Like we understand obviously that this day is not going to come at any time ever in our lives. Um, and, and this apparent date is actually called a symmetrical or palindrome because the numbers um, are actually read the same backward and forward. So whether you start at the year 22, second, which is February 22nd, which is the date, or the date, month, and year. Either way, you're going to end up with the same thing. So that is just phenomenal. So the, the social media streets have been very busy, hey, making sure that they make a whole lot of noise with this day. But we celebrate it more than anything because it is the day the Lord has made. We shall definitely rejoice and be glad in it. So on my message today, I really just want to encourage someone. Um, you know, I just, I just had it laid in my heart to share this with anybody right now. Um, I don't know what you might be going through, but I'm just here to encourage you to encourage yourself in the Lord. You know, sometimes you will be in a situation where, um, <laughs> you feel alone. It's like there's nobody 
at your corner or not, nobody really understands what you're going through you know um you're not alone we've all been there you know it happens to each and every one of us but i love how the bible actually teaches us that you will kind of like meet those moments you will go through that time in your life when there's like nobody but <laughs> there might be nobody physically but the god of glory is emmanuel god with us and he will never leave you nor forsake you so the bible tells us to encourage ourselves in the lord i see my queen right there Bushle. hello ma'am welcome so good to have you um so one of my go-to bible verses okay so when i'm feeling down and out and i feel like okay god i feel alone i feel like i can't do anything i feel like i'm just like done i'm drained i'm tired i'm about to throw in the towel i'm about to call it a day and i'm feeling at my lowest you know of course it's only natural for us to reach out to our friends to reach out to our family members to our spouses you know that kind of thing um and that is what the bible actually encourages encourages us to do and have you ever been in a situation when you know that you are at your lowest but it's like god sends someone and then you need to be their encourager but you yourself need encouragement i feel like right there you know um i have been in situations where i'm like but come on god i need encouragement myself at this hour why are you bringing somebody that you expect me to encourage when i myself i'm running on an empty tank like what is going on it doesn't sometimes make sense but i believe that when you are obedient to the holy spirit to that which god has called you to amazing and beautiful things are able to happen first Thessalonians 5 11 says therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing what I love about the scriptures that it reminds me personally not to be selfish at a time when I'm in that space thinking I need this God I need encouragement why are you putting me in a situation lord where i have to encourage somebody else when you know like you know like, i mean you god right you know that i do need encouragement myself but you expect me to still be selfless when i'm there in that level uh, in order to be there for someone and it's okay you know and it's okay to be that way because god will use you when and how he pleases it's not for us to decide when he decides to to put us in situations where he needs us to step up to that which is called us to be um it is our responsibility though to walk in obedience so again speaking to um being selfless and putting each other first i love this because it, it is speaking to neighborly love you know love yourself as you love your neighbor absolutely um so for me it, it, it was like a learning experience like okay god so and you'd be surprised that you are actually able to be there for them and what i found interesting is that as i would be obedient in what the holy spirit is asking me to do the person that i'm busy encouraging and i'm ministering to is like i'll be ministering to myself faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of god because the first thing i do i'll be running to verses like yo girl this is where you need me it's at girl this is what you need to do girl this is what god is saying let us pray <laughs> meanwhile when i'm praying it's interesting because it's like i'm also getting released and i'm getting encouraged from that which is actually sucking the life out of me isaiah 40 31 is also my other favorite verse um this verse is so powerful that i believe you know um it holds so much strength in it and it's so true when it says when it says but those who hope in the lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary um they will walk and not be faint speaking to rest in your hope in god and god alone he is alone our source of strength and and he will provide that which you need at the exact time when you need it so stand on God's promises. Whatever it is that you may be going through, remain strong. Rest your hope in the Lord. He is the one that will just pour unto you more of himself. And sometimes God allows for us to go through some difficult times. You know, he allows for us to go through some weird moments and you're like, God, where are you? What's going on? You know, um, it's not that he's not there. <laughs> All he's doing is that there's something he's training you up in. So we always have to be of good cheer to say like, okay, God, I don't quite understand what is going on or what does this got to do with me, but I'm going to choose to trust you. I'm going to still rest my hope in you, although things look a little dizzy and there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And, and, and the thing with trusting God brings me to this next verse that I'm going to share with you now. Um, I've experienced this myself in multiple occasions in my life. I'm sure you can also attest to it where it says, Isaiah 43, 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. God doesn't say, no, I'm going to send my angels to be charged 
to be charge over your life which he does in psalm 91 and everywhere else in the bible but here he says <laughs> he will be with you right and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you when you walk through the fire, I'm reminded by Abednego, Meshach, and Shadrach right there. You will not be burned. Those guys came out scot free on the other side. Hey, they were not even smelling of smoke. That is what the word of God says. The flames will not set you ablaze. And I believe personally that God allows for us to go through the fire, to go through the storm, to go through uh, the tight, very uncomfortable places. Um, because at the end of the day, when you put your trust in him, you're going to come out victorious and he is going to get the glory and him alone. And how are we to celebrate logically? I'm a logical person, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, God, can that make sense? How are we to celebrate God's glory if we don't get to go through the fire? If we don't get go to go through the storm and come out still standing. Because here's the thing. It's not about you going through the actual whatever it is that you're going through. The hardship, the challenge, the obstacle, the disappointment, you name it. It's about how you land on the other side of it all. So if you're still standing, if you are still standing, understand and know that the God of glory is with you. And he will be proven true by you coming out on the other side alive and well so don't lose hope don't lose your trust don't unplug from god when you're going through a tough time that is the best time for you to remain plugged in to stay on it uh, to to hang on to God if, if it's all that you have to do so be sure that you do only that that which the holy spirit tells you to do Deuteronomy 31 8 says the Lord himself goes before you. Oh man, I love this. The Lord himself goes before you. I mean, guys, are you getting this? The Lord himself. I mean, this, this, I mean, like, I can't even begin to explain what that does to me. I get excited. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So I hope this is helping somebody. I don't know what you're going through right now, but understand and know that the God of glory in that situation, although it might not look like things are happening or things are changing, <laughs> he's gone before you. Okay. That's why God says, walk by faith and not by sight because sight will deceive you. It will look like nothing is happening. In fact, uh, things might get a little worse before they get better. And that is the resistance from the devil. You know, devil is not going to now escort you, you know, to your victory. No, he's not going to be like, hey, you know, signaling there, like over here and directing you in the way you should go. No, he needs to take you out. He wants to take you out. So at the end of the day, um, when there's a bit of hardship, don't lose hope, rather press in. Because you know that you fight the battle from a place of victory, rest it with your hope secure in God, your trust sealed upon the God of glory and standing firmly on his promises because he says he will never leave you. He says he will not forsake you. And he tells you, you know, he doesn't even ask you, um, you know, I, I would suggest that you not be afraid and I would really recommend that you not be afraid. He says it's an instruction. Do not, it's actually an order. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Huh? You know the Ten Commandments, right? Where it says, thou shalt not. This sounds more like a <laughs> one of those, you know. <laughs> do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Um, because he has gone before you. So if the God of glory is already there in the landing, what is there to be afraid of? You know, what is there to be afraid of? But I would like to encourage you because we are human beings. I do get those moments where I'm like, God, I don't know, man. I'm not sure. Like, should we? Like, what? You know? That's where you pray. You talk to God. You encourage yourself in the Lord. Read the word. Meditate on the word. You know, study the word. And remind yourself. Remind your spirit. Speak those words out aloud so that your spirit can hear them and you can be actually strengthened. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? There again, speaking to command. Just like we read now on Deuteronomy 31.8. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The God of glory again repeats himself to say, reminding Joshua on Joshua 1.9. When he's consumed by fear. I do want to admit, yeah, fear sometimes knock on my door, but I move it, remove it by faith. That's the only thing that counterfeits fear is faith. Otherwise, you're in for a long one. Again, have I not commanded you, the Bible says, be strong and courageous. 
do not be afraid again a repetition of the one we just read now do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's almost like the same verse that's being said on Deuteronomy 31 8 where he says that he's gone before you. Here he says he will be with you wherever you go. So wherever God sends you, wherever you find yourself, guaranteed that the God of glory is gone before you. Not only is he gone before you, but he says that he will be with you wherever you go. Even if you take the wrong turn, and we do that, oh Lord, have mercy. We do take a wrong turn now and again, especially when we're not being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Or we feel like, oh no, God, I got this unlocked, you know, I got this unlocked. Just keep a low profile, I can keep this pushing. It never ends well, so don't, don't, don't do that. I've been there, it's, it's, it gets ugly. I find myself crawling all the way back to the <laughs> throne of grace. So when God has commanded you to be strong, to encourage yourself in the Lord. Do not be afraid. Do not be as discouraged. Understand and know that he is with you. Rest on those promises. Do not operate from a spirit of fear, but rather encourage yourself in what the truth of the gospel says about God's position where you are concerned. 2 Corinthians 1 from 3 to 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Let me tell you, I think God was operating on this verse when he came for me at the time when I had to be strong for somebody. And I myself, I was a wreck. I was like, what do I have to offer, you know, your child, God? Because I'm already running dry. Like, what is this? You know, but... If God has called you to do something, you'll be very surprised um, if you allow the Spirit of God to move through you and in you to do that which God has called you. You'll be very surprised how all of that actually works out perfectly for His glory. So, we give God the praise, the God and Father of our Lord Christ Jesus, the Father of compassion. Oh, we do have a God who's compassionate. The Bible speaks about the compassion of Christ Jesus. It even says Christ was moved with compassion. You know, we serve a God who's compassionate because God is love and he will comfort you. That's why the Bible says uh, Christ Jesus told the disciples to keep a low profile and chill. And he says that I need to get to the Father. I need to get to heaven. Okay. Because if I don't get to heaven, get seated on the right hand side of the Father, the helper, the advocate, you know, the counselor, the comforter, and the helper. Those are the four descriptions of the Holy Spirit that you find in the, in the Holy Book. Cannot come. I need to leave so that I can bring God the Holy Spirit to dwell among you, to dwell inside of you, and to operate from inside of you. That's why the God of glory is able to comfort us. We are able to get comforted as individuals, even if we are feeling discouraged, because the Holy Spirit dwells in us, and He is the comforter. And in as much as you yourself might need comfort, you are able to offer somebody else the comfort, because the God of glory, His whole spirit, is dwelling inside of you. So I'd like to encourage you, even if when you're going through a tough time, when God calls you, to rise to the occasion when he directs you to be there for someone, he will be moving through you <laughs> to be that comfort for that person, to be that encouragement for that person, to be those words of wisdom for that person. Whatever it is that is called you for, be obedient. Just move from a place of obedience. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You know what I love so much about the rest of God? It, it's this kind, of, this kind of rest that doesn't make sense. You know when things are looking sketchy <laughs> in your life, personal life, or in your uh, um, family life, or in your community, or the nation, or whatever the situation may be? You have this peace. You know the one that surpasses all understanding that the Bible talks about? Yeah, the one that doesn't make sense. Yeah, when, when the storm is going on and things are happening, but you are rested and at peace. It's because you have humbled yourself under the mighty hand of God and said, You know what, Lord? <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. But all I know is I am tired, I am weary, and I'm burdened. And it is your rest that I'm looking for. There's nothing, nothing that could ever offer you the peace that the God of glory speaks about. Christ Jesus says that I will give you the peace, not as of this world. There's a difference. Not as of this world. Not the one that this world will be able to give you, but I give you my peace. Speaking to the presence of God. 
when God speaks about his peace, he speaks about his presence. Why am I saying that? Because that is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is peace. So when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, the peace of God, not of this world, will be with you. The joy of the Lord, which will strengthen you, will be with you. His gentleness, his meekness, you know, patience, which is like a struggle for me, but I'm working on it. But the patience of God, it is one of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Long suffering is one of them as well. So while you are going through whatever you may be going through, you might be suffering right now. <laughs> you might be needing comfort and you might be feeling a bit like, ah, I don't feel like worshiping. What am I worshiping for? God, things are not working out. Worship your way out of that situation because that will strengthen you. Put on that worship music. You know, listen to that audio that you like that will just speak life over you, that speak life over that situation that you might be experiencing. Stand in agreement with what the God of glory says about your life. When you are going through anything at any given time, remember to always keep your eyes fiercely locked upon Christ Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one and no one. It means everybody, Jew, Gentile in the works. Nobody gets through the Father except through him. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. You get all those three things. Direction, way, truth. You operate from the spirit of truth, which is his Holy Spirit. And um, life. You are able to bear fruit. You can be a blessing to others. God can use you uh, exponentially. So do not... Do not um, sell yourself short by ignoring the commands of the God of glory from his holy book. So I would like to encourage somebody to be strong and to take heart if you are hoping in the Lord and hope in the Lord anyway, because that is where you will get strengthened. Do not be moved to the left or to the right so that you can remain rooted in the truth. You know what I love about God? He says everything, you know, the heavens and the earth, everything, you know, will fade away. Things will disappear, etc. But his word shall remain. Why? Because in the beginning there was God. God was the word, was the word and the word was with God. He is his word. But you need to back it up with faith and wavering faith in what the God of glory says. And you will see how quickly that yields results. God is not a man that he should lie and he definitely doesn't change. It's not like you and me, humans, sketchy like that. Just kidding. <laughs> so John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things hmm? so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Christ Jesus didn't make it a secret that we're going to have trials and tribulations. You're going to be met by problems. You're going to be persecuted for believing in Christ Jesus. You will be accused. You're going to be ill-treated. The list goes on. But he tells us to take heart for he himself has overcome the world. So if he dwells in you, he is for you. God will never be against you. So when you move and you are governed by the Holy Spirit, you too can overcome the world. You know, um, from a place of peace, which is the peace that God is able to give us that um, surpasses all understanding. Psalm 23, 4. I'm sure many of us are familiar with the Psalm 23, right? Yeah, yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I love this part. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, maybe you are in a darkest valley right now, but I'm here to encourage you. Even if you walk through that darkest valley, you tell yourself, I will not fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Take comfort in the Lord when you're in that place of fear, in that place of persecution, in that place of discouragement, in that place of hopelessness and helplessness. Take courage in the Lord. You might be thinking, okay, great time, and you've given us a couple of verses for us to read over. No, I'm giving you the verses because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Fear is a spirit. It's not something that is made up. It exists. Fear is a spirit. So for you to combat the lies of the enemy and for you to take charge of your spiritual environment, you need to speak the word of God over that situation. 
There is no point complaining, and God hates complaining anyway. So don't sit there in the corner and be complaining and complaining and complaining. Have I done that before? Absolutely. Do I do it now and again? Of course. So I'm not calling myself holier than thou, and I'm definitely on my journey as well, like everybody else. But I have seen that complaining does nothing for you. It just sucks you dry. It just sucks the life out of you. So I'm here to encourage you. Don't complain. Renew your mind by speaking what the word of God says over the situation. You might not see immediate results at that point. It's not like now at the, at the click of a finger, things are going to start corresponding to what the word of God says. But I can trust, you can trust and believe that in the spiritual realm, things would begin to start moving and shifting so that they respond to the will of the Father over your life. All these verses that are inside the Bible, the Bible was written through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It is what God has for you and I. You stand on those promises. And there's nothing wrong with reminding God about what he said on his word. It's not because he's forgotten, but it's because it's important for us to speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Speak it. You might feel like you are mad or whatever when you are alone in the house and speaking the word of God. Don't worry about it. Speak the word of God. It's a sword of the spirit. Okay, that is your greatest weapon. That's why it's part of the armor of God found in Ephesians 6.10. Make some time to read up on those and put on that armor of God. In fact, when you're, if you're on the other side of the screen right now and you feel like you want to put on the armor of God, I'd like to encourage you to do this every morning at night. Morning before you get out of your house, put on that armor like you put on your clothes. Night when you sleep, put on that armor like you put on your pajamas. Okay, so... This is how I normally do it, but you can take this and practice it and see you probably enjoy it, right? Because I didn't know how to probably personalize this, but I decided to personalize it anyway. So Ephesians 6.10, this is how I put it in as part of my prayer. I say, I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I tighten the belt of truth. I put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. I raise the shield of faith and I draw the sword of the spirit and abide all of this in prayer in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's one of my little prayers that I make. So go and read up on Ephesians 6.10. There's six pieces that make up the armor of God. Put them on. As you are speaking them, you will, they will be put on. On a spiritual side of things, you know, not physically. But it's good to get into the habit of those kind of things because really... It will take you, take you places. So the other verse that I really, really love, which I really, really think is very powerful. If you've got time, read the whole book of Isaiah 43. Read it, read it, read it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you discern what the word of God is saying for you to accurately divide the word of God as First Timothy says. Accurately divide the word of God. On verse 4, it says, since you are precious. You, yeah, I'm talking to you. You are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you. If you have not come across a verse where God tells you that he loves you, it is in, in, in Isaiah 43, 4. Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. This is the promise of God over your life personally. I love you, not y'all, you, <laughs> as the person you created you. So take that and appropriate it by faith in Christ Jesus. Know that you have the free gift of salvation only and if you do accept Christ Jesus as Lord over your life, all right, um, as Lord over your life, and, and you believe that he is the son of the true living God. Christ Jesus is so so alive guys and well like you have no idea he is so alive and well i can't even begin to explain that i don't know what to say there's not there's no words for me to explain he is alive and he's well he's not some imaginary figure somewhere it's not like some white dude with blonde eyes that's not who god is god is spirit he's not some jewish person or a black jesus forget all that rubbish it's all worldly rubbish and philosophies which don't make sense god is spirit you are spirit and that's the bottom line. He created us as nations. Because when I look at you and you look at me, we are created in the image, outward of God. But the likeness of God is how we function. Speaking about the character of God, which speaks to his Holy Spirit, which is the person of God. So God is definitely not some white dude with blonde hair with blue eyes. 
end of story period end of story read it in the bible it says god is spirit those who believe in god should worship him in spirit and in truth bottom line end of story that's it nothing else now 2 Corinthians 4 17 says for our light and momentary troubles I'm talking to somebody right now who is in a tight corner for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all whatever it is that you're going through right now understand and know that the glory that's gonna come from after you've suffered a little while oh I love that verse it's also found in the in first Peter after you've suffered a little while God says I will restore you okay so whatever it is that you are going through whatever losses you've experienced whatever troubles you are, it says momentary troubles because god says these two shall pass so understand that space that you are in right now of discouragement disappointment hurt pain all of that stuff that's going through right now where you need to encourage yourself in the lord i like to remind you that it's a momentary trouble that you will come out of and you're gonna come out of that stronger in a better position with god but you need to do your part you need to plug in you need to go into the source you need to sort after god's face and walk with him because his promises also says in romans 8 31 what then shall we say in response to these things all these things that you might be experiencing if god is for us who can be against us there's no demon in hell okay demons exist don't don't even try to play this one on a low key demons are alive and well and satan has got a kingdom hey whoever told you that satan is some dude with horns with a tail rubbish with a pitchfork no he's a spirit a fallen spirit he was created an angel and he got to god sideways and god kicked him out now he's roaming the streets trying to take everybody out because the only thing that satan wants is to be worshipped that's why one of the three temptations that happened when christ jesus had finished fasting for 40 days 40 nights in the desert the idiot came up to christ and be like oh no you know um i can give you all these riches talking about things that already belong to god like how stupid is that and then he goes on to say um ten if you are the son of god you know turn that stone into bread like what the heck are you talking about and then he tells christ jesus to take a leap you know like to jump over the cliff because uh the angels will catch him but christ jesus responded at each and every temptation by using the sword which is the word of god Again, speak to that spirit of discouragement. Speak to that spirit of fear. Speak to that spirit of helplessness. Speak to that spirit of hopelessness. Spirit of dismay, hurt, resentment, bitterness. I don't care what it is. You speak the word of God over it. And at the end of all those three temptations, Satan took a run for it because there was nothing to talk about. That's why the word of God is the sword. It's a weapon. Use it. Use it. The word of God is the only defense besides prayer, praise, worship, and all those things. I'll get into that at a little stage on our next teaching. Arm yourself with the full armor of God. Make use of, of each and every piece of that armor. Read up on it. Study it. Ask God to help you so that you can walk in power, in boldness, and in confidence for the finished work of the cross that Christ Jesus has done for you and me. So, in everything that you do, do not allow for the spirit of um, discouragement to take over your life. Because uh, Satan is very good at lying. Hey, he's wonderful at lying. That's why he's called the father of lies. Oh, he's good. He, had, he then got most now Ed, Adam and Eve all weird um, in, in the Garden of Eden, you know. Um, so, the only way to offset the lies of the enemy is to speak the word of God, which is truth. Holy Spirit is not only known as the helper, the comforter, the counselor, and the advocate, but he's also the spirit of truth, the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit of revelation. It's in the Bible. Let's read our Bibles. Um, my sisters and brothers, I'd like to encourage you. Read your Bible. You know, God doesn't say we must read our Bible so that we are able to read all back verses. He wants us to read the Bible so we can spend time in his presence. Don't even think for a minute that that Bible is just a piece of paper with ink on it. Yeah, to the naked eye. But the minute you invite the Holy Spirit to teach you things and lead you in all truths, speaking about the Bible, he is the author of the Bible. That's how I learned the Bible. You know, that's how I got encouraged in the Word. That's how I built myself. And that's how I learned what the Word of God said. And that's how I put on, it is an armor. And I sharpened my sword. When you sharpen your sword, 
It means you are knowing your word. So when the time of evil comes, further down on the verse, 6 to 10, as you read down, Apostle Paul, one of my favorite apostles of all time, says, So when the day of evil comes, you shall stand. And after all is said and done for you to stand, that is why you need to arm yourself with the word of God. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. I don't care if you do it for five minutes or ten minutes a day. Get into a habit of studying the word of God. The days are very evil. Guys, the days are evil. Satan is not here on a holiday. He's not here to make friends with anybody. He's on a mission and he knows his time is short. So do not fall prey or allow those who are around you to fall prey to the deception of the devil and his strategies. He's very tricky. He's very sleek. Uh, he's just pure evil in everything that he does, you know. Um, there's nothing good in Satan. There will never be anything good in Satan. But if you are equipped <laughs> to do the works of the Lord, but equipped to also defend yourself against the the, the, the dark forces and against the principalities and rulers of this world, against the fiery arrows, the Bible says, from the enemy. Because Satan is your enemy. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care anything for you. You want to go and done, dusted. That's it. Period. End of the story. But you've got God who loves you, who died for you on the cross so that you may have life and life, life for eternity. Everybody, everybody, salvation is available to everybody. Jew, Gentile, it doesn't matter. It's available to every single person because the Bible says whomsoever believes in Christ Jesus, that he is the son of God, that he died for our sins, was risen in three days, and now is seated in heavenly places with the God of glory, shall receive or shall be saved. But you don't want to just be saved and then you hang around and you go your day to day and live like a powerless Christian. No, you want to be saved and you want to be moving from a place of authority that Christ Jesus gives you, right? And how does Christ Jesus give you authority? By baptizing you with the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? The third co-equal to God. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Father. That's why when we pray, Christ Jesus that says, when you pray, and you whatever you pray and whatever you ask for in heaven, it shall be done for you by my Father, provided that you pray using my name. If you ask anything in my name, right? So that's why you have to pray. Whatever you pray and say, in Jesus' name. Because the power, the crux of Christianity is right there. Christ Jesus is the corner chief stone. There's nothing, nobody else, there'll never be another crucifixion that's going to take place. Nobody's going to be hanging on no Calvary uh, forever. And that's why his kingdom has no end. So Christ Jesus is here to stay. He's going nowhere. And he'll be reigning with those that he's picked for himself. But you and I are still on the earth. Let us seek after God and that which is uh, pleasing unto God and that which is our birthright. You have the right to the free gift of salvation. Go for it. Don't wait for tomorrow or whenever. Go for it. Tonight is your night. If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, do it tonight. Because here's the thing about the Bible. I'm not trying to instill fear in you, but the Bible says tomorrow is not guaranteed. So don't wait until tomorrow. Be like, oh, I'm going to research about it. I'm going to ask Uncle Google. Forget Google. Google is not a spirit. It's Google. You know? Um, pray and ask God and engage with God. You know? Ask Him directly if you don't believe in God. God, are you real? If you're real, show me that you're real. Oh, He'll respond. And trust and believe that you will not be left confused. He will make his presence felt in your life. And you will know that the God of glory actually exists. So I really want to encourage you tonight. Jesus is alive and well. And he loves you. He died for you on the cross. So that you may have life and life more abundantly. You have a purpose over your life. He's got predestined works for you to do in this lifetime. <laughs> and into eternity the holy spirit is the seal of ownership that god gives you it's in the bible the seal of ownership that god gives you it's a mark to say that you are mine and it's the guarantee of things to come it's in the bible read the book of romans so if you have not accepted christ jesus as your Lord and savior tonight is your night Okay, this could be for somebody that's going to be watching in the future. That's great. This could be somebody watching right now. It's also fantastic. We're going to pray. I speak a little bit fast, so try and keep up. But don't worry, I'll try and slow down. So 
let us uh, pray this prayer together. It is called the sinner's prayer, but it's really a prayer of repentance and inviting the God of glory, Christ Jesus, to be Lord over your life. So we got to stand together in agreement for God to do only that. Share this video with anybody else. Friends, family, don't be shy. Just share it, share it, share it, share it, share the link. Uh, let the word out there. We're all about spreading the good news. We're all about spreading the, the, the good news, you know, about Christ Jesus. Because I've experienced Christ for myself. Personally, I still do to this day, even when I'm speaking to you right now. Oh, he's real. Oh, he's very real. Uh, please repeat after me as you pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross at Calvary that I might be forgiven and have eternal life. In the kingdom of heaven father i believe that jesus rose from the dead and i ask you right now to come into my life and be my personal lord and savior i repent of my sins and will worship you all the days of my life because your word is truth spirit of truth i confess with my mouth that i am born again and cleansed by the blood of jesus in jesus name amen and amen so if you pray that prayer and believed it in your heart okay you have been born again and welcome to the kingdom of god welcome to a fantastic fantastic life this is the best decision you could have ever made for yourself and for your generations to come here's the thing though that satan makes us forget especially the youth of today i i would like to think of myself as youth okay that's what i'm saying i know when you pass 30 people tell you that you know youth anymore but you know what um i refuse i, I will be renewed you know by the holy spirit to maintain my youthfulness <laughs> But um, really, if you believe that the God of glory is, is, is the God who is, whose son is Christ Jesus, who was risen after three days and died on the cross for you, believe that in your heart, you, would have, you, would have, you have received the gift of salvation. So appropriate that by faith. From here onwards, spend time in the presence of God. Nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to cultivate and nurture and feed the relationship that you have with God for you. You need to do all of that. God wants to have a personal relationship with you. Christ Jesus wants to have that intimacy with you. That is why in, in, in one of the books, I, I think it's First Corinthians, I can't remember the chapter. That chapter specifically at the end, there's a benediction that says, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide in us in Jesus' name we pray. That word fellowship of the Holy Spirit so when you abide in Christ Jesus, who abides in the Father. And how do you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, which is, which is being baptized over you by Christ Jesus? By spending time on the Word. That's how you stay in communion with God. Communion is not that stuff, okay, it is symbolically in church. You know, in church we have communion, right? We have the blood, we have the bread, break it. That's a resemblance of Christ Jesus. And then... Um, we have the wine which we drink, which is a symbolism of the word. That's what he did um, during uh, the Last Supper. You can do that every day in your home. You can have communion every single day. It just doesn't have to happen in church. You can have daily communion in your home with the God of glory. Do it, you know. And, and although the mind will play tricks at you, Ask God to help you in your disbelief. Yeah, there's a psalm which says that, you know, King David was raw like that. That's why he's one of my favorites ever in the Bible. He told God his issues, his problems, and his shortcomings, and his failings, etc. There's no point hiding from God. Tell God the truth. He commands truth because he's a spirit of truth. Anything outside of the truth is not going to fly. So don't even waste your time in that. Speak the truth. Engage with God. Be honest. Be transparent. Be vulnerable. And be humble under the mighty hand of God. He's got you. He's for you. He's not against you. You know, he's fighting battles even right now that you know not of. I mean, the Bible tells us that he loved us while we're still sinners. You're right. So much so that he gave his only begotten son to die for us so that we could be reconciled with him. And we are reconciled with God. Now he sees us as the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Right? Because Christ Jesus has to take upon himself all those sins and take it straight to Calvary. So that you and I can become a new creation. When you accept Christ Jesus, you become a new creation. And you get to live the life that God had intended for you from the beginning of time. Before the foundations of the earth. He knew you while you were inside your mother's womb. He's got plans for you. To prosper you. 
to give you life, not to harm you, but to give you life and life abundantly. So appropriate that by faith. Stand on it. Remind God about it. You know, um, God, God, God doesn't change and he doesn't lie. So with that, I hope that you are encouraged. Um, meditate over those verses that I shared with you earlier. You know, ask the Holy Spirit to minister into your heart when you do. Uh, always say invite the Holy Spirit to come in and he does a fantastic job at uh, revealing things and the treasures of heaven and the manner of heaven that we do not know of. He's able to unravel hidden mysteries and hidden treasures of heaven. So um, the God of glory is there. He says in the last days I will pour out my flesh, I will pour out, sorry, my spirit on all flesh, Joel 2. I will pour out my, my, my spirit on all flesh, your daughters and sons will prophesy, they will see visions, all men will see dreams. It is the word of God. It still stands today. All those things that were happening during biblical times, it is happening today. You too can experience it. I personally experienced supernatural healing from sinus. I had suffered from sinusitis for 22 years. I, I couldn't taste anything. I would cook by my <laughs> with my eyes. So if something burned on the stove, I wouldn't be able to know that it's burning because I could not smell anything. For the longest time since I was 13 years old, uh, 20 years and beyond, about 22 years, I had suffered with um, sinuses. And I knew there was something off about it, but this, the more I got closer to God, he was able to reveal to me. And then one night I just said, God, I'm not doing sprays. I mean, if you wanted to know anything about sprays, nasal sprays by the chemist, you know, by clicks or discam or whatever, Tabang was your go-to girl. Like I'll be recommending from the organic, non-organic to the, I knew all those nasal sprays because I would always be carrying one in my bag. Every other hour, I'd have to put in a drop on my nose, um, you know, to be able to actually breathe like a natural thing where I've got a nose, <laughs> but I cannot breathe. And sometimes when I'm sleeping at night, I'm having like little seizures where I'm struggling to, to get air and I breathe through my mouth and it's uncomfortable. So I would forever be getting a little sores in my nose because I was struggling from breathing because of the sinus, which I don't know where it came from. So God highlighted to me to ask my mom, um, did I always have sinus when I was young? And my mom was like, no, you never had that problem. Like, so when did it start? She's like, oh, aren't you when 11, 12? And I'm like, that can't be real. <laughs> it can't be natural. So when I prayed about it, one night I just told God, tonight I'm not putting on my heels of spray. And I want to wake up healed tomorrow. And I spoke his verses about healing that are in the Bible. And I prayed them over myself and I went to bed. I would never go to bed without putting um, nasal drops in my nose ever. And sometimes in the middle of the night, if I get to it, I'm able to wake up and put more. But that evening I slept right through the night and I woke up in the morning and my sense of smell had returned to me. I could smell everything. Now you can imagine. For 22 years, you haven't been smelling jack. I was running around everywhere, sniffing on trees, sniffing the couches, sniffing the bed, my armpits, everything. I was like smelling everything. I enjoyed it so much because now my taste buds also are better because I can actually enjoy the food. Because when you are having a nasal blockage, it affects your taste buds. And sometimes you have running eyes and stuff like that. Man, it was intense. But let me tell you, from that day to now, I never have problems. I've never bought a single nasal spray in my life, ever. I can breathe. It doesn't matter where I am, whether it's in a dusty area, whether it's winter, whether it's summer. It doesn't matter because my nasal, my nasal problem would be aggravated by the environment under which I was at a particular time. So sometimes to a point where some of the nasal sprays that I was using, I was not even responding to anymore. So I had to try something else that actually had a stronger kick. You know what I'm saying? So... God healed me of <laughs> sinusitis supernaturally. And I was alone in the room. There were, there were no angels and things flying around. He just did what he had to do. And to this day, I can testify. So when I say Christ Jesus is real, he is real. Oh, he is so real. It's not even funny. You know, so to this day, I'm able to breathe the way that he intended for me to breathe. So even if it's a physical sickness you're going through, emotional torture, psychological, spiritual, give it to God. Encourage yourself in the word of God. Stay rooted in what he says. Believe it. Work with your faith. Faith without works is dead. Take action. Stand on God's word. You will not regret it. God, those who rest their hope and trust in the Lord will not be disappointed. They will not be dismayed. And uh, they will not be uh, disappointed. So stand on the word of God because it is true. It is the way, the truth, and the life that is who Christ Jesus is. He is for you, not against you. You can do all things through him. He has overcome the world. Do not walk from, operate from a spirit of fear. Do not be afraid. Stay strong, but strengthen yourself in the Lord and use his word as your weapon. And you will never 
be a letdown by that so with that it is a good night for me i know i took a little bit longer it's because i also came in like 10 minutes late so i do apologize for that thank you so much everyone for tuning in i trust that you'll be richly blessed by that which i have to share tonight go on and share um you know the page with somebody that you feel might need a word or two from this and might be encouraged from it it will be appreciated don't forget to check out our blogs as well at agotsa.co.za don't forget to catch me live at africa usa radio uh, just type in africa usa radio via the google store my show is called the burning bush i do come to you live monday tuesdays and thursdays from five uh, to seven central african time which is in the evening so um yeah if you want to be part of the show let me know but follow my page as well friends of the burning bush to keep up with that which we do so stay blessed and may the god of glory uh go before you may he surround you with his presence may he just um surround you with his consuming fire bless you in your comings and goings and provide you with good health and i pray all of this in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ jesus christ thank you so much for joining us on on his commission now brought to you by god's heart our mission stay blessed <music>